the name of Jesus. Amen. The sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. Paul calls it like it is. He's not going to sugarcoat anything. He has the freedom in the gospel to lay out the problem honestly and clearly. This present time involves suffering. This creation is in bondage to corruption and is groaning like a woman in labor, suffering the curse of the fall, subjected to futility. And we, likewise, are groaning inwardly, longing for the adoption as sons and the redemption of our bodies. The Apostle Paul was a really good Lutheran. He knew the freedom of the gospel. We follow in his footsteps, and in this freedom of the gospel, we have the freedom to call it like it is. Life in this present time involves suffering, groaning, as we suffer the curse of sin. We can only confront these realities head on because we have hope in Jesus Christ. So Paul, in Christian freedom, calls it like it is. Suffering, groaning, bondage to decay. We see it all around us, don't we? Violence and war, injustice and abuse, man-made and natural disasters, famine, poverty, sickness, death, the whole creation subjected to futility, bondage to decay, groaning, groaning as in the pains of childbirth. And we see it in ourselves. Sins always waiting at the door. You cannot conquer it. You cannot, you keep on doing the very evil things that you hate. From the moment of your baptism, you have been under constant attack from the devil, the world, and your sinful flesh. Your Christian life is a life and death spiritual struggle. Peace with God puts you at war with the devil. So not only the creation, but you yourself groan inwardly. Be sure it isn't all bad. We also experience many wonderful things in life. We've seen goodness, truth, and beauty in this world and in other people. There have been times of great tranquility and joy. It is truly good, right, and salutary to enjoy and give thanks to God for the good gifts of friends and family, of food and music and the arts of time spending, enjoying the beauty of God's creation. We can even give thanks to God for archery tag and bubble wall. And there's great joy and satisfaction to be found in our vocations as we give of ourselves to help and care for others. But suffering is always in the background. We cannot escape it. Without the gospel, it would be too much for us to bear. Without the gospel, we would live in denial like the rest of the sinful world. The sinful world trying to rationalize suffering. That's just like it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, survival of the fittest. You win some, you lose some. No pain, no gain. It's just karma. Or others who try to deny the reality of suffering. It's just an illusion. You have to choose to be happy. Focus on the good and the positive, and good things will come to you. And then there are those tender consciences who cannot rationalize and deny. And they will seek to escape the harsh reality, self-medicating with drugs and alcohol, food, or sex. But not us. We do not have to rationalize. We do not have to deny. We do not have to self-medicate. 
We can face the reality because we have an answer for it. We can call it like it is because we have hope. Paul doesn't give us pat answers. Even the idea that God works all things to the good of those who love him is shrouded in mystery and can only be apprehended by faith. It's only natural to ask God why, but usually there is no answer given in this life. And so the real question is this. How can I be certain of God's love in the midst of my suffering, in the midst of my groaning? And Paul's response is wonderful. He says it a little later on in Romans chapter 8. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? See, that's the answer. God isn't just sitting up there in heaven looking down in pity on your suffering, hoping everything will work out. His love for you is not a mere feeling or wish. His love for you is manifested in action. The Father does not spare His own Son, but gives Him up for you. The Son willingly comes down from heaven and is incarnate as a man to live for you, to suffer for you, to die for you. What a great hymn we just sang. I love how deep. For us, for us, for us, for us, again and again and again. Everything he did for us, for you. God knows what you're going through. For the God man. Jesus Christ went through it too. He endured temptation as he waged war with Satan in the wilderness. He knew grief as he mourned the death of his friend Lazarus. He knew hunger and thirst and weariness. He knew the scorn of his enemies and the betrayal of a friend. He even knew sin as he bore our sins on the tree. He knew pain and suffering and death. See, this is the kind of God we have. A God who does not withhold from himself the sufferings common to us all. He came and he groaned right there with us. He takes our suffering. He embraces them. He carries them. He bears them all the way to the cross for you. How do you know that God loves you in the midst of your suffering? Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. God, who is willing to, that, to do that, is God who loves you. And that kind of love will never let you go and never forsake you. Another question, though, is how can I make it through the day? What answer is there for my groaning right now? The answer is hope. Hope is what gets us through the day. We know that in Christ everything is going to be okay. No matter how things, no matter how bad things are now, in the end, in Christ, we win. Church militant to church triumphant. Right now, according to St. Paul, we have adoption as sons. In sin, we were orphaned, alienated from God, our Heavenly Father. But Christ has made himself our brother in his incarnation, signed the adoption papers in his own blood, baptized into his death and resurrection. We receive adoption. And now, as sons of God, we also receive the inheritance. And this is the inheritance. A glory that is to be revealed to us. The revealing of the sons of God. The creation set free from its bondage to corruption. The freedom of the glory of the children of God. And the redemption of our bodies. In short, a new heaven, a new earth. Our own bodily resurrection. Following after the pattern of our Lord Jesus Christ. An eternal life with Christ. Where suffering and groaning will be turned to everlasting peace. In the meantime, the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. When we 
are overwhelmed with our groaning, the Spirit intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he directs us to the Word, reminding us of our status as elect children of God, brothers of Christ, his people looking forward to the glory to be revealed to us. Faith in Christ is not another form of living in denial. Faith in Christ is certain, for he has risen from the dead in real history. Paul and the other apostles are eyewitnesses of his bodily resurrection. And Paul calls it like it is in our text today, because his Lord has conquered every power behind the sufferings of this present. So with Paul, we take courage. If Christ is for us, who can be against us? We have the freedom in the gospel to call like it is because we have an answer for the mess. Jesus Christ crucified and risen. And we know that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. In the name of Jesus.